welcome in everybody to a brand new episode of Audio Nuts, your pop culture palate cleanser. I am Eric Oldboy, online with the always amazing genius, Mr. Rin. Pew, 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 pew. What up? What I do? How's it going, man? What are you doing? What are you up to? Uh, playing Star Wars. No, I'm Star just kidding. Wars. <laughs> uh, staying safe from the smoke, trying to breathe some fresh air. If you're listening in like the East Coast, take a deep breath because yeah enjoy it for us yeah when is it gonna go away I, you think that like we've had wildfires before and it gets kind of smoggy out and it'll be nasty but damn it if this won't go away it's like no. it's like what's that movie there was a scary movie like the mist or something that the was like fog a steam, yeah something like yeah. that and like all the all the scary stuff lived in the the foggy parts of it and so i honestly can't tell what's going on in the morning i get up and i drive to work and between maybe fog and smoke it's like a five foot like distance that you can actually see. And it's just that way all day long. We like, I'm pretty sure that uh, we've all died and gone to hell and we're just bad people. And this is, this is clearly hell. Right. Well, at least they're still listening to us, right? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to hell guys. Here's your famous favorite podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, welcome to hell. Uh, it was a brand new episode. Make sure to catch us on <laughs> Apple, Spotify, all those other good ones. Tell all your friends and family to listen in. Yeah. Uh, we're slowly growing slowly, but surely, um, I've seen our Twitter accounts been booming. It's been growing. Uh, so yeah, check us out wherever you can make sure to tell people, tell everybody. Yeah. These guys are fun idiots. Did you, uh, get that email from Amazon saying they're doing podcasts now too? I did. Like, we'll have to figure out how to make sure we get on the Amazon. You know? Yeah. You'll become your favorite Amazon uh, podcast. Like, Amazon? Amazing. It's amazing. So, yeah, absolutely. What have you been up to otherwise? Uh, watching shows, getting rid of my fish. Yeah? Uh, have, you, have you dealt all the fish? No, there's still a lot left. There's so many, dude. There's so many. <laughs> You have fish for days. It's like I gave like five away and then all of a sudden like there's still more. Like God, it never ends, man. Man, I got distracted. All of a sudden my T public thing started going, you gotta sell, but it was like almost like it'd been holding the sales because all of a sudden just like one right after another, it was like ding 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 ding. ding. Did you yeah, get any, let's go? Did you get any hobo hams yet? Let's look and see. I don't think I've sold any hobo hams yet. Hey, people, go out and buy my hobo ham and not uh, Ren's because I, I, it was my idea. He's just the artist. <laughs> just, just don't report us because it's the same design. <laughs> it's exactly the same design, but it's not, we're not breaking any rules because we've agreed to it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I had three sales pop in all at once. Let's see what we got. Today on T Public, Eric Oldboy sold two stickers of Bigfoot, the social distancing champion. So I have a Bigfoot with a, a mask on. Nice. And I sold one mask of crackhead fan shirt. So that's making fun of the new uh, Seattle hockey team, the Krakens. So I made a total crackhead thing. And that's then like a bestseller now. It is, oh, and then I sold one hoodie of the crackhead fan shirt. Oh. So let's go crackheads. Thanks, guys. Same, same dude, probably. No, it's not. Huh? It was two different orders. Do you think oh. that you would have ordered it all at once? I don't know. I'll take it. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Oh man, I got no cells. So. <laughs> Everybody, check out our T Publix. We like those sales. It, it it pays for my streaming, so I can yeah. watch more TV and then talk about said TV on this dumb little podcast. Yeah, it's the circle of life. So, what shows are you specifically watching? Let's let's jump into the healthy stream. You tell us what you're watching. Right now, I'm watching uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah. okay. What episode? What season? Season one, episode six, I think. Nice. And what do you think so far? I, I know that for me, I have a little bit more of a connection with the Karate Kid. Having I'm about the same age as yeah. the Karate Kid and Johnny. And so I, I grew up with that. And it was like, I, I wanted to be the Karate Kid so bad. Right. And so I have that connection. And I was wondering when I told you about it, if someone who was a little bit younger, because I got like 10 years on you, if you would have the same connection, still like it or not. So what do you think? Well, I don't have that connection like you, but right. um, the show is surprisingly enjoyable. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. I'm like, you two made some, this? It's pretty good. I got some bad news for you because I'm going to talk about season two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, yes, so far season one, I enjoy it a lot. Um, I feel like every time people they do shows like 
from the eighties or has an eighties theme or some kind of yeah. like eighties, you know, cause Johnny is basically living in the eighties. Yeah, he it's can't all, seem to shake it. I know. Yeah. And I know people like that in real life right. that are like totally still listening like to their favorite butt rock and rocking their, uh, their ponytails and all this stuff from back then. And it's like, some people just don't move on with the times. It's kind of funny how they, they, uh, not funny, but kind of smart how they kind of incorporate that with like now and day to where um, the the main Miguel, he's always calling oh, him yeah. out, you know, you shouldn't really use, you know, uh, women's private parts to, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. call people out and stuff like that. You shouldn't shame, you shouldn't body shame people. And he's always like, you know, F this, blah, 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 all these bad words. And whoa, whoa. Well, Johnny is like the the living form of toxic masculinity, yeah. but he doesn't even realize it. And so it's kind of fun because you got the karate kid over here and he's like, he's the good guy, I guess, but he's kind of annoying, right? Because everything's yeah. gone right for him ever since he kicked the crap out of poor Johnny. Man, it's been easy street for the karate kid. Whereas Johnny has it just been absolute garbage and he's had to kind of figure it out. And so it's kind of funny to watch them have that character kind of grow and evolve into a better human being. Right. And it is, it's hilarious. He both has no idea on appropriate cultural things on how to say things. Like you said, he body shames people. It's all about the toxic masculinity. Um, and then also like he has like no idea of technology for some reason. Like this dude literally has been living under a rock for some reason. He did. Like, he, and I don't know if it's in season one or season two, he finally gets a smartphone and his mind is just blown away by the smartphone and Facebook. And he doesn't understand how any of it works. And it's really pretty funny. Yeah. Cause right now he's using a uh, flip phone. Yeah. So he gets a smartphone, I think in season two and they teach him how to use fa Facebook. So he could try to like friend Ali and the girl that they both fought over in the karate kid. And it's, it's pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> Looking forward to that then. Yeah. So what else have you been watching? Uh, other than that, just uh usual from not from Netflix, but you know, raised by wolves and yeah. Lovecraft. I actually finished raised by wolves. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. So you give us a full season review on that. Um, I feel like it was only like five episodes and yeah. it's mm -hmm. not a season, dude. It's like half a season. It's just, you know how... I was almost wondering. It almost feels like a limited series. Yeah, you know how in Warrior Nun it just kind of ended and you're like, yeah. what's happening? Next episode. That's how, that's how I feel about it. It just kind of ended like, whoa, this is it? It's not even like a cliffhanger ending. It just kind of, I don't know, it just it's ends. Kind of just stops mid story. Yeah. Lame. That is exactly like Warrior Nun. So now that you've seen all five episodes of season one, um, what's your score? Because I, I think originally we were both used the word intriguing. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's perfect. And we both thought that, yeah, uh, this, this show is pretty intriguing. We gave it an eight. So we talked it could go either way. Which way did it go? Where's your score for season one? I was hoping that it'll go up. Yeah. But for me, it kind of went down. Okay. Yeah. And what would you put it at now? It's more like a six to seven. Six and well, that's not that's not a huge downturn. Yeah. I mean, so you you didn't like clearly you didn't like the rest of it as much as you were hoping, but yeah. it wasn't like to where you wouldn't maybe watch season two. Yeah, because well, I'll watch it to finish it, you know, to see yeah. what happens next. If if it comes out, if they have it, you know. Cause, <laughs> are, are you concerned there won't be a season yeah, two? I'm hoping there is because yeah. uh, it gets a little slow and a little like talky talky. And, you know, so much happened in um, episode one that you're like, all right, let's just go all out from here, you know. And then it gets, right. it gets more into like uh, religion versus atheist sort of thing. Oh yeah, and you kind of get and learn more about the other characters, like the 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 main humans and stuff like that. Well, I, I think I might keep watching it. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I've only seen the first episode personally, and so I'm kind of interested in maybe watching because it's like you said, it's only five episodes total. So may I watch the other four? I have been on HBO Max, still sticking with Lovecraft, and uh, I don't know, man. I feel like here's here's my hot take on uh, Lovecraft Country on uh, HBO Max or HBO. Is that, 
I can't remember, is that an HBO Max show or an HBO show? Because we had this whole conversation last time about Raised by Wolves. I don't know. No, I you haven't know what? tried. You can. You can. You can watch Lovecraft Country on just HBO, the app. So anyways, um, I watched the, as you called it, the Indiana Jones episode. And I feel like this show just gets kind of more dumb as it goes. And I'm keep, <laughs> I feel like I'm invested now, so I'm going to keep watching it. But I really hope that, like you said, it ends up tying together in the end. Because I almost feel like the reason this show, and this is my hot take, and maybe as a white guy I shouldn't say it, but I almost feel like this show is getting mad props and higher reviews because of uh, the full black cast and people are really pro that kind of stuff now because i'm pro that too but the show itself i just think is kind of kind of lame i mean it's neither it's not really boring but the stories all feel like rehashed stuff i've seen previously and maybe that's part of the idea if it feels like movies i've watched in the past and it feels like it was made 15 years ago the special effects are lame the acting's good but the stories feel like rehashes the special effects are kind of crappy and I feel like it's getting all this like praise because it's Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams. And it's being put out in this particular environment where people feel like if they said something bad about it, it would make them look bad. Because it's not inherently smart. Because sometimes I get it. I'd be like, okay, I get why the critics like this show. I'm just not smart enough for it. Dude, I'm smart enough for this show. Everybody is. And so that's just, I don't know. That's kind of how I feel. Oh, boy. Is being canceled. <laughs> I know you're gonna, I'm gonna get canceled now. Dude. Yeah, dude, I feel the same way, man. Like episode just like Raised by Wolves. Maybe it's like a HBO thing. Episode one, like the ending part is dope, crazy. Oh, what's, what's gonna happen next? And all right. of a sudden it just go downhill from that, you know? Yeah, I don't I don't know. And HBO has always had such high quality shows too. Um they I mean, they put out one other than the last season and a half of Game of Thrones. That is my favorite show of all time. No, no doubt about it. And they put out so many good pieces of TV. I've loved so many shows on HBO. I can almost always count on sitting down, watching an HBO original and really enjoying it. And I don't know if it's just because they've expanded their media empire and they've brought in lots of new people that maybe their quality has gone down a little bit. But yeah, recently the newer HBO shows just haven't felt quite as good. Yeah, maybe their focus is too broad now, you know, rather than just making yeah. one good show. They're trying to get multiple out there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> if, if that's what we're doing. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, moving over to Netflix. Uh, I wanted to talk about since you brought up Cobra Kai. Uh, I actually finished season two today. Um, season two is not nearly as good as season one. So season one, I, I can't remember what my score was, but it was probably in the, the seven to eight range because I thought it was pretty decent. Um, the real problem I felt with season two is they focus so much on the kids that they uh, it becomes almost just like a teenage like Nickelodeon show. All right. And there's all this like teen drama of, I love you. No, I love you. And they have all these moments where one couple breaks up and now they're dating the other couple. And it's this whole thing, you know, these, like, they're so focused on this Cobra Kai um, rivalry with the Karate Kids Dojo, uh, Miyagi-Do or the dumb name they give in it. And it's like, it becomes kind of silly. And the, the acting of the adults is pretty good. The acting of... Miguel is really good. The rest of the kids all suck. Like the girl that plays the Karate Kid's daughter gets more and more screen time for what, who knows what reason. She's a terrible actress. Uh, and then they add in this like this dorky adult that wants to be part of these kids' dojos that you're like, what the hell's going on here? He's almost like comic relief. And you're like, why is he even part of this? And it, it just gets sillier and sillier. And the cheese factor on it like amplifies like a hundred percent as season two kind of clicks along and it doesn't happen right away it kind of like eases you into it it's almost like i don't know if this season was made by netflix or if it was made last made by youtube but whoever YouTube. was producing it decided that they wanted to change the tone of this show to be sillier and maybe more kid friendly because it definitely feels more like a show kid danger would like at this point than i would like and i don't know about season three because this last episode, I won't give anything away for everybody's going to watch it, but there's this like 
karate fight scene in the school where the entire school starts like karate fighting each other. Like a and battle was, royale. Yeah, it's like a straight up dude. It was a straight up battle royale of all these like high school kids karate fighting, and I started like laughing out loud. I lol the hell out of it. I was and I, it wasn't meant to be funny. I don't think I. I was like hysterically laughing because it was the cheesiest thing I'd ever seen. And I was just like, this show jumped the shark so, so hard that I was like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll still, cause they clearly set it up. They, there's a, there's a legit cliffhanger uh, at the end of se- t- episode 10 season two. So I'm hoping that there's a season three just so I can see what happens. But uh, yeah, season two. So season one, if it's an eight, season two is a four. It's like half as good. I mean, there is season three, right? Because that, that's the one that just came out on Netflix. Oh, well, I, I haven't watched that one then. Because it didn't offer yeah. it. Are you sure? Because it didn't offer me. You know how like when you finish one, it off, automatically offers you the next one. It oh, didn't really? offer me to watch anything else. So like I started watching something else. Because it's like, oh, heck? okay, I guess I'm, guess I'm done. I'm done here. Oh, because I, I swear YouTube had like, two seasons okay. and then that's why netflix was promoting it because they're doing three i wonder Unless, if if season three hasn't come out yet like if they're getting us geared up giving us chance to watch it all before they launch season three let's see oh what I'm, the hell you're right yeah it didn't offer me a season two or a season three episodes so um yeah season season one's pretty good Season two kind of sucks. Hopefully season three, if they get a season three, we'll figure it out and find a better better uh, rhythm. So if, if that's the case, then Netflix, you guys suck. You yeah. took it from, from an eight to a four? Come on, man. Yeah, I know. You, you, cut, you cut it in half. It was, it was a pretty good show, and then you cut it in half. Yeah, the tone of it changed. I wonder if when it switched – from YouTube to Netflix, if they replaced the the showrunners or something, had different people right. making it, because it was like, what the heck? I don't get it. But I'm gonna t- give you a review of a show on Netflix that I really do like. And we talked about it. I asked you if you were gonna watch it, and you said it sounded more like something your wife would like than you. But I'm here to tell you that The Duchess, the one that stars Catherine Ryan, oh yeah, the yeah. comedian about the lady who uh, lives in London, and she has uh, like a eight, nine, 10 year old daughter. I have no idea what the age is sometimes. <laughs> I should have three kids, <laughs> but uh, her 10, 11, 12 year old, whatever she is, she has that kid. And then she's trying to get pregnant again with another kid from her, her ex while dating someone new is really funny. And the critics hate it. So this is one of those times I looked it up. And this is one of the times where I completely disagree with the critics. Um, yeah, for what I've seen a lot of mostly people, I think on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got like a whopping 38%. So people don't like it. I don't know. It didn't have any fan reviews, I don't think. So the critics didn't like it. But I enjoyed it. I think it's really funny. They pointed out that they thought the humor was too crass. And you know me, I don't like if it's too crass either. That's why I didn't like Paradise PD. Season but, two. Yeah, season two specifically. But I didn't think it was too crass. I thought it was funny. I thought I like the dichotomy between this American woman who was really like give two Fs about anything and kind of the posh like London British people that are like kind of shocked at how she acts. Right. And I also liked uh, the relationship between her and her daughter where she treats her daughter like an equal rather than like her, you know, daughter that she can tell what to do. Except for when when they have those moments and the daughter doesn't know what to do because she's not used to her mom, you know, trying to discipline her. Because she's eight. Yeah, eight. (laughs) Yeah, whatever she is. Yeah, whatever she is. Yeah. But uh, I liked it. So um, we've watched, it was only eight episodes, I think, because it caught me off guard when it ended at episode eight. But the wife and I both liked it. And I would give it a solid seven and a half, eight. It's funny. Wow. Um, it has a few heartfelt moments. And it's got some amazing one-liners, like stuff that I was repeating because it was just cracking me up because you, like, you're shocked that they said it all. There's this whole moment where... <laughs> I don't want to give it away, but there's some really funny moments um, that I did not see coming. So I have to admit that the storytelling was at the very least interesting uh, that I'd never kind of seen before. Well, did it matter that you knew who she was going in to the show? 
Maybe, maybe that's the key. If you don't know, because she's basically playing Catherine Ryan. So if you've ever seen her stand up, this is exactly what her stand up yeah, is. Yeah. It's really kind of like blase in your face. And people are kind of like taken aback by like, oh my God, I can't believe this woman just said that. Right. And that's, I think that's honestly who she is in real, <laughs> real life, which makes me want to friend her all the more. But that's what, yeah, maybe that helps. So maybe if you are deciding to go watch The Duchess on Netflix, uh, just know that she's kind of, she's not really harsh, but she's not afraid to say whatever is on her mind. And whatever is on her mind is usually pretty disgusting, which makes it kind of funny. And she's, she enjoys kind of like belittling and putting down people. And if you're not into that, if that makes you uncomfortable, this is probably not the show for you. Right. Yeah. Maybe people didn't know who she was, you know, it wasn't expecting it. And then just kind of, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're like, what's what going the on here? This lady's yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah. I hate this show. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's fair, but. Uh, so yeah, uh, old boy likes it. Critics hate it. Uh, do what you will with that. Man, just like uh, the opposite of Lovecraft. Critics yeah, exactly. love it. Old boy yeah. hates it. Yeah, maybe I'm just a terrible critic. Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know good media. Maybe yeah. my simple mind just doesn't get it. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, Netflix has a new show coming out that I'm actually kind of excited about. It's it's totally different than what I normally get excited about. And uh, so this is both a tasty trailer and a brand new six part TV show um, debuting on September 25th. Uh, Sneakerheads is the name of it. And Sneakerheads is starring Alan Maldonado. Um, I know him from Blackish, and I think he was in that Tracy Morgan show. And it says here that he was in the last OG. I've never. Oh yeah, that's that is the Tracy Morgan show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot that's what it was called. Yeah, I only so, know him from Blackish. Blackish. Yeah, and honestly, I'm real excited that he's landed a starring role because he's played kind of the sidekick in a lot of shows, and I think that he's a really good actor. And so I was excited to see him get to take a swing at being the lead. Um, it also has an uh, Andrew Bachelor from To All the Boys I've Loved Before who I don't know that show and I don't know this guy, but I got the strongest Chris Tucker vibes from this bro. As soon as I saw the trailer, I'm like, this guy is like a young Chris Tucker, which makes me so excited because I've missed Chris Tucker because he only seems to do those dumb movies with Jackie Chan. And it's like, I don't know why Chris Tucker, he literally does no other film. What are those movies even called? I forget. Rush Hour, sh- bro. <laughs> yeah, he only does Rush Hour movies. He's exclusive Rush, to Rush Hour. Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2, two three, Rush Hour 3, 4, 5, 12. He was in Friday. Yeah, that was his debut, and he was kick-ass in Friday. And for whatever reason, he decided he didn't want to do those anymore, and they replaced him, and that's why the Friday movies got dumb after the first one. Because Chris Tucker is funny as hell. And he was in, was it Demolition Man? No, it was the other one, uh, the girl who wraps her boobs up oh, like a mummy. Uh, with Will. With Will, yeah, uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Will. What the hell? that movie? Oh, God, The Fifth Element. Movie. Yes. Yeah. Winner, winner. Fifth Element, dinner. Yeah, he was in that movie too with the big blonde hair. But Chris Tucker's awesome, so I don't know why he doesn't do more stuff. But this guy, um, Andrew Batchelor, he, he gives me, he doesn't necessarily look like Chris Tucker, but just kind of his acting style is kind of like that, like, whoa, you know, that like overly excitable kind of dude. He always played that part. I know him because he does a lot of YouTube video. And they call him oh, King, okay. King Botch King Botch, or King Botch or something like that. King Botch. Yeah. And so he, he got really popular on YouTube and does all these like funny videos. And yeah. he's been getting a lot of like these gigs. Remember, he was also in the, the, the Babysitter movie. Oh, he was. Yeah, By the yeah. way, a uh, little side note. Did you see there's a sequel to the yeah. Babysitter movie? I haven't watched it yet. I didn't even put it on the list, but I saw that there, like somehow there's a sequel. Yeah, I started watching that as like a background show. Yeah. And then I stopped like 15 minutes in. It's that but, bad. Yeah, it's. Yeah. But I was surprised that it's the same people. Really? Yeah. Like, you know how it, it ended? He's like a freshman in high school. Yeah, and then it takes place like two years later, and now he's a junior, and it's the same kid, and everybody's back. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, uh, the movie was kind of dumb the first time, so I never even thought about watching the sequel. It's funny that it even got a sequel. It's like, how are you not going to finish Santa Clarita Diet, but you're going to make a sequel to the Babysitter movie? Idiots. King Botch, man. King Botch. But anyways, uh, Sneakerheads is about exactly what you think it would be about. 
Um, the main dude uh, is a former sneakerhead, really into it, but he's married now. He's got a kid, and he's trying to like be, you know, professional dad kind of thing. Yeah. And he's uh, all of a sudden he gets dragged back into the the dark world of you know, high price, hard to get sneakers, and he's trying to like have that one big score that's going to make all the difference for some sort of i think they called it the zero some sneaker that's like like a legend no one's ever got it but they all want to try to get it and he starts to round up you know the chris tucker looking fool and these other people i think i saw even a glimpse of um who did i see there was i think baron davis was it baron davis there's a couple of basketball players yeah nick young was in there yeah <laughs> swaggy p yeah and that one scene was like very nervous why are you sitting in coach <laughs> yeah it looks it looks kind of funny so it's like one of these like comedies that's not like over the top comedy so it looks like a more of a dramedy where they're kind of blending in the dramatic comedy and normally uh we don't talk a ton about those types of shows but the, the acting looks really good the concept seems kind of fun and so yeah i'm i'm totes down for sneakerheads. what did you, what did you think I'm gonna watch it. I enjoyed it a lot. Like a lot, it's it's like totally my tone, like comedy wise, you know. And it's cool to see all the sneakerheads, like real life sneakerheads, you know. Hopefully, like PJ Tucker makes it in there too or something. Yeah, and you know, I've always wanted to be a sneakerhead. Like I feel like that's something I could waste my money on, but I've just never been able to commit to it. But I wouldn't be shocked if Kid Danger becomes a sneakerhead because he's obsessed with anything with Damian Lillard's name on it, and right. we have all sorts of Dame Dollar sneakers. I hope uh, Lamarcus gets on there because remember he has like a whole like shed or house in the back full of Jordans or something like a that. A house just for his sneakers. <laughs> yeah. You have to like anymore to be like a legit sneakerhead. You have to be insanely wealthy because yeah. the real because there's another show I think it's on Netflix too, where they go around. It's more of a documentary style show, and they go around talking to these sneakerhead people. And I was watching one episode, and the guy was like at a trade show, and he was literally selling you sneakers for twenty five k, like all the time, all day long, and they were like cash deals. These people were rolling like I'm just gonna rob sneakerhead conventions because these fools are rolling in there with like fat stacks. Um. Makes you wonder is like, what are the connections they have? You know, like who the hell do they know? Uh, I don't know. Like, I guess once you get into that world, you start to you know people. All of a sudden, you find a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, and I guess it's really probably about taking risks. Like anything to be successful, you're willing to go to maybe places that seem a little weird. You're willing to buy a sneaker. You're not so sure if it's going to be the next thing. Maybe it's a, a fake. So you you kind of get into all these different things and try them out. It almost reminds me of. Uh, I want to give a review of woke over on Hulu next when we move over. And they had a lot, they've had a lot of uh, sneakerhead stuff uh, kind of mixed into that show. Right. It always makes me wonder like, you know, sports athlete, you know, like Dame Lillard or LeBron KD in them. Yeah. Like how often do they wear their shoes? Like, is it once per game or do they wear it? The- yeah. And then what happens to once he's done wearing it, does he give it to somebody to sell it, use, you know, so you need to have that connection, you know? Yeah, I bet you're 100% right. Because what's the one thing we know about professional athletes? Just like rappers, they all have posses. And you know the posses aren't making any real money otherwise. So it's almost a guarantee that after Dame Lillard or Durant or whoever it is yeah. comes off the court and they get ready, they're they done with the shoes because they only wear them for the one game, that they give it to the posse member who in turn knows somebody or sells it. And that's how this stuff starts to get leaked out into the real world. Yeah, it makes me wonder too, like, do they do they break it in or they just kind of put it on and play you know i don't know i mean it's interesting because i did you ever watch the um the last dance with the jordan thing he was talking about how he would wear new sneakers every game but one game he decided to rewear his og original jordans and he said it made his feet bleed because he just wasn't used to wearing that kind of shoe anymore so it's like almost like these guys are better with new sneakers right well, like new generations, right? You know, the yeah. LeBron 1 versus the LeBron 10s, whatever. Right. The LeBron 1s is like outdated. Maybe these really expensive ass sneakers don't need to be broken. I wouldn't know because I can't afford them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Sneakerheads. Everybody watch it. September 25th on Netflix. Um, but, yeah, I was talking about it on Hulu. I've been watching Woke, some more Woke, you know, Winston. And uh, I still like it. 
it's pretty funny. It's definitely teetering on more of the dramatic side than on the hilarious side. It still uses the the gimmick of the talking inanimate objects. So there's talking markers and posters and things like that. But it's kind of neat because you get to see um, this artist go from being this guy that was a, a people pleaser and wanted to please everybody. And then he realizes he wants to stand up more for his cultural values and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty good. But there is one of his roommates. We talked about how the last time one of his roommates was the cokehead from um, Workaholics. But his other roommate is a sneaker head and there's oh. a whole whole last whole episode i watched was him scoring sneakers and all three of them went down to this really sketchy area and I'm like dude we're gonna get killed because they're like in this weird like dark room with like blue flashing lights and also this nerdy guy comes around the corner and like here's your sneakers <laughs> and it wasn't scary <laughs> at all but it just seemed like it would be so yeah i saw this one meme where like uh it was like a, a pair of jordans yeah and you could tell because the 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 logo looks so off, and it's like, how do you how do you not like see that? You know, I would think pro sneakerheads can spot fakes pretty easily, but I don't know. It's probably like the average Joe where we're like, we just want to buy that as a gift for somebody. You know, oh, kid, did you like shoes? I'm gonna try to get him this one, and it turns out it's a fake. You're like, yeah, you don't even know. Probably like eBay, the kind of place to totally get you because you they probably even don't show the right. They show real pictures and send you the fakes. You know. Yeah, yeah. I saw a PS5 on there. Like that looks not like a PS5. <laughs> Fake news. Like, yeah, do not buy a, a new PlayStation on eBay. It looked like a PS4 and they just painted it white. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So, anyways, woke is still it's still pretty good. I, I it's up there. I'd still recommend it. Um, I also saw a, this is another almost tasty trailer, but a new show coming out on Hulu called Monsterland. And I think they're prepping it in time for All Hallows Eve. It comes out on October 2nd. Uh, Monsterland is an American anthology horror series based upon the novel North American Lake Monsters, which I've never read. Uh, there's stories by Nathan Ballingrud, and it's going to be eight episodes long. And the trailer looked pretty good. I didn't, I didn't recognize any of the actors, so I don't know if you did. But uh, I, I kind of like these creepy shows, and it looks like it's pretty well made. I think there was one that I recognized. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I tried to even look it up, and I'm like, I don't recognize any of these people, which is okay, because sometimes if they're too famous, it takes you out of it. Just like fantasy, if, if horror movies have too famous of an actor, you're too busy recognizing the actor to be scared. Yeah. So, But I watched the trailer, too. It looks really good. I'm like, yeah. yeah. They actually uh, show you a few of the monsters in there. I'm like, ooh, that's cool. Yeah, it looks like it uh, is a decently made show. The plots look pretty good. And the fact that it's based on, a, I guess, a well-selling book is probably a good sign. So, you know, the scripts are going to be tight. Right. Yeah. Um, I love horror movies, so I'm looking forward to that. Halloween's the best, dude. Yeah. And Hulu does a really good job. They go all out for Halloween. So, yeah, they're usually putting out lots of movies and TV shows. And just recently, you guys got me into horror movies. I went horror movie crazy last Halloween. So I'm, I'm going to continue that because nice. I've definitely desensitized myself and I don't even get scared by the, the jump scares so much anymore. See, it's just it just started with like the, the Walking Dead, you know, you, get, you, get, you see all this blood and guts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's all I had for Hulu. Um, I have some big news uh, on Disney Plus. Um, Disney Plus uh, gave us the trailer for The Mandalorian season two, and it looks dope. I am so excited for all the Star Wars bros out there. Your 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 lightsaber is fully engaged, and your Mandalorians are going everywhere. Yeah, dude, my Mandalorians was just like. Ugh. Ah. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. So, uh, what did you think about the Mandalorian season two trailer? Dude, gave me chills, man. I'm like, I'm so hyped for it. It looks so good. And I was doing some research because we'd been told that they're going to have all these uh, new characters, and a lot of them were from Clone Wars, a lot of them from Rebels. And I'm pretty sure, and at least this is what people are saying that uh what we originally may have thought was ahsoka but it clearly wasn't the actress that we've been told is going to be ahsoka that's kind of yeah. i'm like well, that can't be ahsoka they're saying now is going to be sabine wren and sabine is from rebels 
and she's a Mandalorian, kind of a badass Mandalorian who never wears her helmet for some reason. So it might be kind of cool if that's who it tend, ends up being. But she's a well, she's wielded the dark saber, and she's helped win over the the um, planet of Mandalore and all this stuff. So it'd be interesting to see if that is actually who that's supposed to be. Dude, that's just a foreshadow to um, have Pedro show his face, man. I know they're like, we've been paying this pretty good actor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to be basically a voice actor. Is it really him? Are you sure? Yeah, I've often wondered <laughs> if he's even in the costume. Right. He's just at home voicing but, uh, over. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so this uh, Sabine Wren looking fool is played by WWE star Sasha Banks. So Mandalorian really likes their like women fighters because yeah. you know, they, they've already done this before. They got Gina. What is her last know. name? Caljario Leo. Those with a C. Yeah. Yeah, because I when I first saw it, I'm like, whoa, is that? Is that who I think it is? And then you kind of look at uh, her and then it was like, wait, uh Ahsoka has like these hair or horns, whatever it is. Yeah, she has those weird tubey things coming out of her head. Yeah. So they're like, wait, it's two, and there's none. They're like, I don't think it's her. Plus it wasn't the actress that we known has already been hired for that part. Yeah. So um but it would make sense if it was Sabine because her and Ahsoka are homies. You know, they're yeah. like good friends. And it would that would kind of tie everything together. And I've also heard that they were gonna use the Mandalorian show to introduce Ezra into the live action world which I'm really excited about because Ezra is a really interesting character from Rebels. You know, he started off just kind of a dirt kid and they he had a lot of time over four seasons to grow him into a, like a legitimate gray Jedi that kind of pissed off at the Jedi and all the stuff that's going on. And he ends up disappearing at the end of Rebels. And this would be so cool if at the end of season two, going into season three, we get the hint that we're going to find out what the hell happened to Ezra. Yeah, because, you know, as a narrator, she's, like, telling Amanda to, you know, um, bring Baby Yoda back to his people. And he's like, what is that? And then it's like, you got to figure it yourself, you know? Well, he, she's like, it's, it, she goes, it's a group of uh, galactic sorcerers or something. He's like, yeah. why would I want to do that? And she says, because this is the way. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this is the way. Yeah, this is the way. This is the way. Yeah, I'm hoping that this whole show, I'm wishing so hard for it, that it, it expands the universe beyond the Skywalker. And just, you know, let the Skywalker saga go. It started it's with, yeah, yeah, it started with Anakin and it, sh- it should have ended with Anakin. You know, just leave it be. I don't want to know. I'm Ray Skywalker. Come on, get out of here, you know? <laughs> and so just yeah, give no, us. I- new characters new stories and just let us grow with it you know i totally agree i mean it's star wars you got the entire galaxy to choose and tell stories from so yeah i'm really hoping that disney i think they are too that they're realizing that there's just a cornucopia of ways they can go and stories they can tell and i'm i'm so pumped it's about time we got some more hot content they've been paying for this this subscription and they have yet to give me any marvel (laughs) shows Yeah, because like they have all the ingredients, you know. They have the Mandalorians, they got Jedi's, freaking baby Yoda's in there. It's like, yeah, I mean, they can introduce something brand new that none of us have ever even thought of and call yeah. it Star Wars, and we would be excited about it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm totally down. But speaking of Marvel, did you see that they've confirmed that One Division is coming this year, 2020? Really? When? Yeah, uh, uh, towards the end of the year. I think it's like November. So we're for sure getting WandaVision in the year 2020. I guess it's final and final production where they're editing it all down and they're actually going to put it out. So I'm, I'm like, yes, about time. I, Cause I had hoped to have a lot of Marvel by now. Yeah. They're going to give us at least one Marvel. Yeah. I think that's the only one we're getting. I think that uh, the Captain America or Falcon and winter soldier show had more delays because of their international filming where this one was, I think, filmed mostly on a studio. And so uh, I think WandaVision was actually supposed to come out either at the same time or after, but it's jumped ahead. So it's the first one we'll be getting. It'd be the Wonder Vision. The <clears throat> Wonder Vision. Wonder Vision debuting December 24th. Yeah. <laughs> it's one episode for, the, for this year. Like, we did it. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. It's better than nothing at all. So I say bring it on. Because um, we, we got the Mandalorian in October. 
So that's going to like go all the way till next year. Yeah, that's true. Right. Cause they, they release them one at a time. So you probably get it into maybe right when it ends is when, uh, the, um, one division will kick off. Yeah. So like maybe like two months or so of it. Yeah. That's probably smart on their part. They'll, they don't want to have them competing with each other. Right. So my guess is as soon as the last episode of Mandalorian comes out, we'll the very next week or so we'll get one division episode one right around Christmas time, maybe Thanksgiving time. And I'm paying for the series and all I've been watching was one show. <laughs> Well, I've watched all the movies. My family loves it. So we've definitely got our money's worth. And I've watched all those Star Wars cartoons. Yeah. Well, my family loves it too. But when I, for, for my sake, that, that's new. Like they gave yeah. us new stuff. All I've watched was just The Mandalorian. Yeah, true. Me too. We did watch Ivan and whatever it was about the, the monkey guy, the talking gorilla. That was cute. My son was really into it. Um, though they are continuing to announce new shows. And so they've been saying that they're going to do a She-Hulk show. And today they just announced that they've hired the actress uh, to play She-Hulk. It's going to be Tatiana Mazzolani. Mazzolani? Mazzolani? I have no idea how you say her last name. I've never actually even heard of this actress before. I had to look her up. And it said that she was famous for, what was it for? Orphan Black. Orphan Black. Yeah, I keep wanting to say Black Mirror. So she's most famous for Orphan Black because I we originally thought maybe it was going to be Allison Brie. I even did a Allison Brie Photoshop that should have helped him, but I'm kind of excited. I think that just like with the horror movies, that if you don't know the actor or actress, it makes you buy into the fantasy a little bit more. Right. So as long as she's a good actor, I, I'm down. Yeah, because like you look at uh, Orphan Black, it won a lot of awards too. So it's like maybe they got her because she's a really good actress. Yeah, and the people on the social medias, on the Twitters, because there were people bitching about no Allison Brie, because I like how fans fans came up with the idea of Allison Brie, and then fans are mad when their own idea doesn't work. It's yeah. like, give me a break. Yeah. But um, they were saying, the fans that are pro uh, uh, Tatiana were saying that she's an amazing actress on that show, and that she plays all sorts of different parts on it, and yeah. it's like a whole thing. So, You know why she's really good? Why? Um, because she's Canadian. <laughs> Oh yeah, Canadians. <laughs> Canadians are the best. Yeah. Canadians are like better Americans. That's just the case. So anyways, uh something else to look forward to. Speaking of comic book shows. Oh, go ahead, you have something? Oh, I was gonna I was just wondering how they're gonna like are they gonna CG her body to make it bigger or we haven't even heard yet yeah. how that's gonna work. I'm yeah, really no curious idea. too if they have the kind of budget to really hulk her out or not. Because yeah. the difference between for those of you who don't read the She-Hulk comic, she's always still looked like a buff woman versus buff green woman versus like the Hulk who always got humongous and hulky like you've seen in the movies. Well, it, it reminds me of, uh, you know, Infinity Wars or uh, Endgame where yeah. Hulk is like scientist, scientist Hulk. Right. Where he's uh, maintained his like, you know, human. Yeah, because she comes to She-Hulk and just stays the She-Hulk. She doesn't yeah. ever swap back. Yeah, so... It's, it's going to be like Mark Ruffalo where they just like CGI her face on a big body. <laughs> I guess, you know, and Mark Ruffalo had said that he, excuse me, said that he wants to be part of the show. So I wouldn't doubt um, that he has multiple cameos. Yeah. But uh, speaking of uh, comic book TV shows, uh, a comic book TV show just got canceled. I was kind of bummed. Uh, Stumptown was canceled uh, the other day by ABC. It's the one that starred Kobe Smothers from How I Met Your Mother and Jake Johnson from New Girl. Remember that? It was uh, written and uh, created by our buddy Greg Rucka, who lives in Portland. And, uh, Stumptown was based on Portland, which was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, a- ABC nixed it. No second mm. season. I haven't watched it. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched a couple episodes. It was probably my fault. It's, 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 it's our fault. We didn't, you didn't watch it. I yeah. watched two episodes. <laughs> but I was going to watch it. I kept thinking I'm going to go back to it and watch it. And just, I never did. So that's probably what happened to everybody, I guess. It's because we got all salty because of Jake Johnson's hoops, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe that's why he had time to do hoops. He knew he was getting canceled off the other channel. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I had there. And then uh, CBS All Access, one uh, quick TV news and notes. We don't talk about CBS All Access all that much because they don't ever have that many choices other than that new Star Wars, or excuse me, Star Trek cartoon. Um, they are rebranding because branding's hard. 
and nobody knows, nobody wants to pay money for something called CBS All Access. So they're rebranding to their parent company's name, Paramount. And they're rebranding themselves as Paramount Plus. Uh, Paramount Plus is exactly the same as CBS All Access, but it has the word plus in it, like all good streaming services. Um, however, the one thing they are adding is they're adding 30, and I told you earlier, 13,000. I checked again, 30,000 new pieces of content. So not 30,000 movies, but they're counting every episode of TV shows and things like that. So there's going to be a lot of lot more content to make it a, a more viable streaming solution. But new pieces of content? Well, not new as in brand new for that streaming service, but stuff that wasn't on it before. So it's oh, okay. movies and TV shows that have been on before, but not on CBS All Access. Oh, right. I thought you meant like new shows you're making or new movies you're making. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. So no, not that. I'm, I, I said it wrong then. I wish I wish spoke. And one other thing before we jump to our break is our, I have one and only one tasty trailer today. And you actually told me about it because I was like, oh, I don't have any real tasty trailers. And we were talking about Monsterland. And you go, oh, is that the one starring Dylan O'Brien from yeah. Maze Runner? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, and you're like, wait, yeah, it is. And like, no. And so we looked it up and I'm like, oh, more monsters. So there's a yeah. movie and I went and watched this trailer and it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how long ago you saw it. But uh, the movie is called Love and Monsters, and it does star, in fact, Dylan O'Brien from Maze Runner. And uh, the basic premise is he's kind of in love. He's a in love young folk with his girl, and the world ends by a monster attack. Yeah. <laughs> and they get split up in the, all the chaos, and everybody dies, and it's kind of like the apocalyptic monster world now. And he's out to try to find her so he's looking for her and it looks it's kind of funny it's like a funny movie with monsters and the special effects looks pretty decent i mean what, what did you think uh, i thought it was looked pretty good i mean i recognize a lot of uh, actors and actresses you know the the one girl she's from um uh the punching show the punching I, show i'm daniel ray and danny ray and uh oh iron fist iron fist yeah she was oh that gives me some more hot news i'll tell you in a second and also has the blue guy from the Guardians. Oh yeah, know. and uh, Walking Michael, Dead. Michael Rucker, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What's yeah, I think name. it's right. Rucker. Rucker. Michael oh, Rucker shit. from Walking Dead and Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm yeah. Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looked pretty funny, and then because the movie looks kind of silly, and I think yeah. they kind of own that. Yeah, and th- like I said, it looks like a legitimate movie theater movie. I'm surprised I never even heard of it. I don't know how I completely missed it. So I'm, I'm really excited. Everybody needs to go out and watch the trailer for Love and Monsters. And the best part about this movie is, like I said, I'm sh- shocked that I didn't know anything about it, is it comes out in less than a month. It's available October 16th on video on demand only. They're not even put, trying to put it in the theaters. It, I went back and I read about it and they, they're calling it PVOD, which stands for premium video on demand. And they're renting it. You can rent it for $19.99 or you can own it for $24.99. So may wait for the reviews and it's worth it just buy a copy <laughs> but um yeah so it looks pretty good i'm actually kind of interested in this one yeah i don't know i might rent it because i uh, keep saying it but i never have yet i said that about yeah. bill and ted too and i still haven't done it yeah by the time you want to watch it it'll be on your streaming services yeah oh and my 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 news that you made me think for a second that i didn't actually have written down on the show page was you talked about iron fist yeah uh yesterday or no next month next month october uh iron fist and luke cage become a uh, back they they they're released from their netflix contracts and those characters are back in the mcu so if uh disney wants to do something with them they can what about the punisher so the punisher and daredevil have a little bit longer because i think it had to be off air for like two years or something what? like that yeah so they said that they get Daredevil back, I think, in December, and the Punisher is back right shortly after that. And then they can they can recast the characters. So like you say, I don't like Danny Rand. Well, I didn't either, but maybe they can recast and make it awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe they could recast Luke Cage and make it awesome. You know, the only one I would like, to, I thought the Punisher and Daredevil were both great actors. So if they wanted to keep those actors, I'd be totes down. Yeah, totally down with that too. Yeah. So uh, that was the little tidbit that I had. 
So I think this is the perfect time to take a quick break. On the flip side, I have a whole bunch of news, uh, um, all sorts of stuff. I have like, I have huge, huge Marvel news that could change the face of phase four of Marvel. Um, I've got some, <laughs> some hilarious news about a social media star about to get his ass absolutely beat, which is going to make me incredibly happy. Uh, the Fresh Prince is coming to real life and you can experience it. Uh, we're going to touch on the Apple event along with Xbox and PS5. And last but not least, you're not going to believe what Captain America did. We'll see you on the flippity flip. Need affordable graphic design? Visualantidesign.com should be your first stop. High quality work at low, low prices. Perfect for every need from corporate to personal. Visit visualantidesign.com now and request your free quote. And for a limited time, mention Audio Knots for 10% off your first project. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. I think it's time to dip our toes in the news jacuzzi. <laughs> So uh, my first story I wanted to talk about was um, Logan Paul. Do you, do you know who Logan Paul is? Oh, yeah. Did he get right. canceled? Yeah, he, he's been canceled about 12 times. He's a real <sighs> dick. And I don't know how he keeps staying like in the news. He's yeah. like the least talented a-hole ever. What's his brother's name? It's Logan Paul and... Sean Paul. I don't know. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I don't know. Logan Paul has a brother that's less famous because they had, uh, I remember a long time ago when my kid, kid danger was actually into him before we realized how dorky they were. And they had like a rap video that they put out where they were like apologizing for their beef to somebody in the rap video. It was so bad. And I'm like, this can't be real. And he said it was so, but Logan Paul, I don't know if you've known this, uh, to kind of recoup his fame that he's lost from being a kind of a hole. He's been uh, celebrity boxing, and he yeah. has had his fair share of fairly good uh, outcomes of celebrity boxing where he's fought other celebrities, beat them, and built himself a little bit of notoriety in the boxing world. He's in fairly good shape. He's a real a-hole, so he's probably got a thick head. But uh, this idiot is going to get himself murdered. Murdered. I mean, this guy is as good as dead. So Logan Paul has signed and it's on paper it's official has signed on to fight floyd merriweather this is the probably the only time i've ever been interested in seeing this guy fight because there's no way that floyd merriweather doesn't absolutely kill this guy i hope that like the only way logan paul makes it more than one round is if he just runs for his life for the entire round because he's not going to be able to take real punches from a real boxer like that. And I is Floyd, a real boxer. He's a really good boxer. Yeah. It's, it's totally for the money, right? Yeah. For both of them. Right. Yeah. So like Logan Paul knows he's going to lose. Floyd knows the whole thing's a, a, a gimmicky joke, but if, as long as he hasn't agreed secretly behind the scenes, not to k- kill this poor kid, I hope he goes in there and just tears his head off because yeah. nobody deserves it more. Yeah. Cause I, it's probably he needs more money to gamble or something. Yeah, well, Floyd, I remember the, one of the first times I saw a Floyd Merriweather interview. He does this thing where he carries around a briefcase. And the interviewer was like, what's in the briefcase, Floyd? And he goes, well, I'm Floyd Money Merriweather. I always carry around money. He cracks this thing open. He goes, I always carry $100,000 in cash on me. And they're like, well, aren't you nervous? He's like, nah, man, I'm Floyd Merriweather. <laughs> so what they should do is they should take that briefcase, put it in the middle of the ring, and tell Logan Paul to try to take it. <laughs> that, that should be the whole thing. And just Logan Paul tries to get to it as Floyd just continually beats his ass. That's like a uh, WWE match now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's so ridiculous. But I saw that, and I, like, I thought, this can't be real. And I checked on it, and it's absolutely a real thing that's going to happen. So... Uh, I don't know how much they're going to charge for it, but if I can figure out how to illegally stream it, because I don't want to give either one of those guys money, uh, I will illegally stream it and laugh my ass off as Logan Paul gets killed in the ring. Honestly, though, that's that's a pretty like good marketing like gimmick, you know? Well, it's working. We're talking yeah. about it. It's going to so. attract so many like people. Yeah, because whether you like him or you hate him, the, his, the people that like him are like, oh, I bet you he has a chance. But the rest yeah. of the world, the 99% of us are going to be like, we want to see it just to see this guy get killed. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, speaking of uh, 
mixing reality with fiction, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air house is now on Airbnb. Airbnb has been doing all sorts of fun promotions. We talked about a couple episodes ago about the Airbnb blockbuster video here in Oregon. Oh, right. And they've been doing things like this, I think, because Airbnb is hurting thanks to COVID. So I saw that um, Airbnb has listed the, the house that was on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the TV show. Obviously, the internal chunks of it are going to be different because for those of you who don't know, TV shows are filmed on sets and these external portions of their houses are, you know, just a photograph or a small video of a house. And it doesn't normally look that way on the inside. However, whoever owns this house has remodeled uh, one of the bedrooms, a closet in like a different area to look like uh, Will Smith's Fresh Prince was been living there. So it says, according to the listing, the rental includes Will's bedroom, a full bathroom, the pool area, an outdoor lounge, and the dining room. There are also several perks listed, like playing basketball in the bedroom. Yep, that's right. It says the bedroom. Uh, trying your hand uh, at some turntables, a la DJ Jazzy Jeff, and access to the closet, which promises to be full of Argyle Prepster and all-star athlete looks. So um, you can rent it, uh, I think, one night at a time. And I don't think it was all that expensive, but uh, when I checked, it was completely booked out. You couldn't actually get into it anymore. So you had to be wow. kind of a first come, first serve. But you don't get access to the majority of the house. It's just one little chunk that they've made specifically for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air fans. Wow. That's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you were into it, like, yeah. would, you, would you go stay there? Uh, how much is it per night? I think honestly, unless I misread it, I could have swore it was only like thirty dollars a night. It was like oh, really cheap because really? it's all about promotion. Yeah, I probably do it. That's so cheap. You just to experience it, right? Just to say you did it. Yeah. I wonder if you can dress up like Will Smith. They even had in the they have a little, a little video online on Airbnb, and Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff are there promoting it. So oh, nice. Um, it's definitely a marketing play, but it's clever. I, I gotta give them props for doing this kind of stuff. I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't mind it if they did more, you know, because I saw recently on HGTV, they remodeled the Brady Bunch house. So there's lots of these types of yeah. TV show houses. I think a lot of people would dig, you know, like maybe married with children's house, those kind of things. People would right. love to go to those things. Yeah. I mean, they're just there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, next, I just want to touch on everybody must have heard the Apple event happened. So Apple, uh, we were talking about it earlier offline about how their their changes are so kind of small and minute at this point, but they are releasing a new iPad Air, a new regular iPad, a new watch. They're doing a thing with their services where they're combining them all so you can get the Apple Music, Apple Movies, Apple whatever it is all together for one service called Apple One. And I think you get a discount when you bundle everything. And then was there a new phone? Did they even talk about a phone? Yeah. No phone. Yeah, the one thing that they're known for, they didn't talk about phones. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. So are any of those things – oh, yeah, I said watch. So, yeah, watch. Was there any of those things kind of like uh, tickling your fancy? Uh, negative. Negative? You, you just got the iPad Pro. But yeah. I think that uh, I, I, I'm a little bit kind of interested in the iPad Air because I love my iPad Air. I use it all the time. I mean, I, I use it everywhere every single day. I'm using it right now for, our, I'm using two of them right now. <laughs> I got one running a timer. I got another one for our show page. So I'm a big fan of it. And it's like any electronics, all this stuff gets kind of old. So I might dig on the new iPad air. I know my wife wants the new Apple watch, but uh, I'm not sure about the one service. It sounds like something I wouldn't be interested in. Well, there, there's two watches. There's a Apple watch six. Yeah. And the Apple watch SE, which is like a, uh, cheaper lower end model oh, okay yeah i've noticed that's what they're starting to do now so they can get more people to purchase stuff so they offer like just like the air they have the ipad air which i think was like 4.99 5.99 and then they had the regular apple ipad which is well only 3.79 right and so they're trying to give both an economy and a premium version of each thing well i like how they're marketing like the the, the cheaper watch because they, you could have one phone and um, basically connect all the watches to that one phone, and they're promoting it as if you could give it to your kids, so your kids could always like contact you or something like that. 
Oh, well, and that's that is smart. Yeah. So yeah, if you have yeah. four kids, you got to buy four watches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> never even thought about that. Yeah. It's like a tracking device. I'll just put it on Kid Danger and be like, I got this for you for Christmas. And yeah. those of you know, I'm just tracking all of his movements. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's cool. I had no idea. So um, it seems like I think this is this is the holiday year where people are going to be spending some money because all the electronic companies are launching things. Um, the big news over the weekend or over the last couple of days was PlayStation came out with their PS5 news, yeah. and they came in right at the four ninety nine price, same as the Xbox. Um, I know you're a PS5 guy or a PS player, PS4. Are you going to race out and buy one of these? Because you had to like get online, I think, today to get one, right? Yeah, I missed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think Kid Danger still is more interested in the Xbox than he is in the PS5. But, you know, the one thing nobody's talking about is not only is the Xbox and the PS5 coming out, but Facebook is launching the new Oculus. And the new Oculus is called the Oculus Quest 2. And it's at a newer, lower price than it's ever been. Because the Oculus itself has been, it's a VR system for those who don't know. You snap it over your face and wear around and you play games and do all sorts of different apps and things. But uh, it's the highest end, one of the highest end um, home use VR systems you can get. And it used to be about 600 bucks itself. Yeah. And this new one is launching at 299 And it looks pretty cool. Like the reviewer I read, I was reading on it on uh, Mashable, I think. And the reviewer on Mashable like loved this thing. I don't know if they paid them off or what, but they gave it like a nine out of ten review, and they were saying that everything about it works really well. They liked how the apps function. They liked the games that you could get. But I'm just really curious. Like I, I need to learn more about it because two ninety nine is a pretty decent price for you know good VR. I'm curious if you can just plug it into your computer and play it with any game, or if it has to be specially made. Um, another thing that I, the one downside for me is that it is owned by Facebook now and I'm not the biggest Mark Zuckerberg fan. Yeah. I just don't know what I would do with it. You know? Well, I, I would be down for video games because the, the reviewer said that uh, they tried it out and uh, it's, it's kind of interesting when you put it on, it tells you how, if your room's big enough or not to play. And it's like, you're and told him that his room was maybe not quite big enough for the game he was trying to play. And it was Star Wars. And so he was playing, it's called uh, Vader something. And basically you run around shooting, playing with the, uh, I just punched my microphone. I'm getting too Star Warsy. <laughs> playing with a, a lightsaber because he has these kind of, the controllers actually look really cool. These two kind of like hand controllers that you have. And so he was uh, double fist lightsabering inside his thing and he ended up smacking his hand on his desk and injuring his hand. And so I think though, that's the kind of thing I would be into. Like the, like, full body action video games i think would be fun because they also showed in the little video um doing like some minority report type apps where they're like oh look at me i'm excelling in 3d (laughs) that's not what i would want to do but i'd be more of a gamer i think with that yeah just for me like like any other gadget you know you do it one time you're like oh it's cool and then the next time "Ah, it's too much work to set up you know just like i gotta find room I don't yeah. know. That's the key. So like uh, Kid Danger just got his gaming PC. If it worked with games on the gaming PC, then it might be a viable option. But you're absolutely right. If it's it comes with 50 preloaded games or some stupid thing, and that's the only 50 games you could play, you'd get over it over Christmas break. You know, you wouldn't yeah. even want any part of it. Maybe Marky Mark is like, uh, this is the, the, the segue to his metaverse through facebook and you put it on and then whoever has it on we can like kind of see each other digitally in facebook or something <laughs> you're probably not wrong because we've talked about this a lot of times a lot of times you see this new technology and you could see that it, it's gonna lead to something better yeah. and i think even the people that put it out know that it's a stepping stone to something else i mean there's a there's a very specific reason why facebook went out and purchased oculus because oculus wasn't really in their wheelhouse of what they do so so there's something those guys who are much smarter than us have that they want to connect with this thing. So yeah, I wouldn't doubt that we're moving towards that like virtual, you know, Facebook style world. Ready player one. 
Ready Player One. I mean, how often, like every other podcast, something we're talking about is leading towards Ready Player One. So anybody hasn't seen that movie, that's what we're going to. That's 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 the future world, especially now that we're all stuck inside. I can't right, imagine yeah. that they're not rushing towards this. There's gonna be like you know the militia man scene. No, oh, put this wait, on. You want, you want to like make love by touching each other? I just put these oh. things on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that in that movie, they um, save the human race by not having a you know, disease. Right. Yeah, and it's you know I'm sure we're all plenty of disease, so we're not too far off. You can't pass COVID if you're you're digitally. <laughs> That's right. Go to you know, all these sporting events. I mean, look at that. Think about that application. If you had a really good Oculus that like worked, and now I could go to a Blazer game without going to a Blazer game, but it feels yeah. the same. And I and they they don't have to like pay all the stuff for you to be there. They don't have all the things. I mean, I can see where this yeah. could be a really good item eventually. Because like every, every VR that I've tried, it always looks bad. Like like it looks bad to where it hurts your eyes and your head right so if they can make it to where it feels like you're there that's it made me all think about it yeah they were talking about on this one that uh, a lot of the vrs previously were only 60 fps on the refresh rate and that's what makes you kind of feel sick and so the this one they said came out of the box at 90 and it was supposed to have a a hardware upgrade halfway through they'd push up to 144 and that's when you, you really can't tell. I and mean, you're moving around, your brain can see that yeah. it doesn't get confused by the things not moving correctly. Yeah, imagine if you have it and you get to watch the NBA finals like that, you know? That would be dope. I would, yeah. I mean, that would be totally dope. Like, if that's the way they should sell, hey, Mark Zuckerberg, because I know you listen to our podcast, yeah. you make a deal with the sporting events and tell me that if I bought uh, Oculus Quest 2, I would get to watch all my favorite team on it. Like it includes my favorite game, maybe my favorite football team. And I put that on and experience it. I would, I would, you know, you, I'd give you all my money. Yeah. I'd be totally down for that. Just like in the NBA, you see those virtual fi- uh, fans in the back, right? It's like, yeah. why can't I be that person with the VR? Like looking, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've seen them advertise the NBA that way. I have no idea how it works. So it'd be sweet if you could do that. Yeah. Like a little 360 camera in there or something. Yeah, they just put the cameras in the chairs where you'd normally be sitting. And when you yeah. turn your head, the camera moves with you. Yeah. So I'd be down. Um, next, did you hear about uh, Chris Evans? <laughs> I, the funniest news ever. So I saw him trending, but I didn't really look into it because I don't know, I was afraid to. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably for the best. So Captain America himself, Chris Evans, was doing a thing on Instagram where – uh, I'm not sure if it's like one of these trendy things, you know, how everybody gets into like, Oh, everybody's doing it. You know, it's the ice bucket challenge. Everybody does the ice bucket challenge. So I think there's this thing going around where you show like a chunk of your camera roll you know, and you basically screenshot it and you show like a whole bunch of pictures on your camera roll and you post it. So Chris, Chris Evans did that from his camera roll without looking at it carefully enough to see what the pictures were that he screenshotted and put on Instagram. Come on, Mark Zuckerberg. So Chris Evans actually showed a uh, picture of his penis uh, <laughs> and he's admitted to it. He should have denied it because he hadn't learned that you can deny anything anymore. But uh, yeah, so uh, we Maybe saw- he's proud of it, you know? Yeah, he's like, that's America's penis. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, everybody got to see Captain America's doink on, uh, on Instagram and it really wasn't that impressive. I'm like, homie's not Hulk, that's for sure. Yeah, I saw I saw a post afterwards. He's like, "Now that I got your intention, go vote." <laughs> good, like good for him. Yeah. It's good that he owned it. Um, it is pretty funny. I, I told my wife I was telling my wife about this news story yesterday. Oh, hey, did you see Chris Evans' wiener on the Instagram? She's like, "No, what? Why?" And I tell you, I've never seen someone try so hard to find something online before. <laughs> like, damn, girl. She was so into it, trying to figure it out. And luckily she couldn't find it. I'm like, yeah, you got to go to the Reddits. That's where you find this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, on, um, on Twitter, people were using, uh, his phone and I like, photoshopping yeah. stuff into the role. And I can't believe this is oh. on there. You know, like stuff they like, can't believe Squidward's on there. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So now it's its own meme. Yeah. So thank you for that. Uh, we all got to enjoy that. Um, but here's my biggest news. My my final story sticks into the Marvel world. 
I teased it a little bit. This is the biggest Marvel news in forever. And it's coming from an unexpected place. So uh, Ant-Man 3 is in production. And this huge news came out about who the villain of Ant-Man 3 is going to be. Oh, yeah, and yeah. even more so, uh, more importantly, is they're talking about this villain is going to be basically the new Thanos. So he's going to carry over for multiple movies. He's going to be the almost like the villain face of Phase 4. He's going to have a lot to do with a lot of things in these upcoming movies. So Marvel is introducing us to Kang the Conqueror. And Kang, for those who don't know, is kind of this robot-looking, blue-faced like guy who uh, travels the galaxy, causing issues. But the reason he's able to kind of start off in Ant-Man is because you know Ant-Man does a lot of time traveling with this his weird interdimensional thing. Yeah, and that's where Kang kind of gets along. He 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 lives in those kind of areas, and um, <clears throat> they've cast the dude from. Um, Lovecraft Country, country Jonathan Majors. So the main guy from Lovecraft is going to be um, King the Conqueror. And I'm pretty stoked on this because I think that guy's a good actor. Yeah, he's a good actor. And yeah, he's a great actor. He's torque too. He looks yeah. like a superhero. And uh, it says, uh, based on the comics, King is usually an Avengers level threat, battling both Earth's mightiest heroes and and the young of uh, young Avengers on multiple occasions. So that leads to the second part of this news. This is like one of these kind of snowfall things, right? So in one, we're getting to learn about the new big villain, the, our post Thanos villain. Okay. Two, we've just learned from that small paragraph that they are working on young Avengers. And we've seen this start to happen a little bit as they've started to bring them all together with a uh, little miss Hawkeye I guess I forget who else. I wonder if I have this up. They were talking about other ones. Who, do you know who the other young Avengers are? No, because I, I remember we talked about uh, Haley and Steinfeld playing her, like, yeah, a few podcasts ago. Yeah, so I didn't write that down, unfortunately. But uh, and then, so we're gonna get introduced to the young Avengers, and then uh, the third thing that it does is the, um, Kang the Conqueror's real name is Nathaniel Richards. And he is his descendant of Nathaniel Richards is Reed Richards, the one and only Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. So that means that uh, Fantastic Four is also on the horizon. And in a fun twist, he's probably going to be African American, which I'm totally down with. Yeah, a lot of people are like, stick to the comics. <laughs> yeah, suck it. Suck it, yeah. fools. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would be totally down. We talked about this a little bit offline. And my pick for Reed Richards, if we're going to go uh, the African-American way, is I like David something something Washington, the guy from Tenet uh, yeah. and uh, Ballers. I think yeah. he's a great actor. Ricky. Yeah, Denzel's Ricky. kid, dude. Yeah, Denzel's kid. Yeah. I I keep waiting for him to blow up, and I feel like he's on the verge of blowing up to be a big-time actor. And so, yeah, I think they should hire him. What do you think about all this news? Does uh, King the Conqueror have an ethnicity or is he just like robotic blue? He's like blue. And so it's like no one should be able to say, well, he shouldn't be this or that. And it's like he's blue. Well, so because of the, the actor they got was African-American, you think that his kid has to be. Well, that's what we think. Know. But, yeah. you know, I don't know enough about King the Conqueror other than I've seen him in the comics rolling a few times, whoop some ass and roll out. You know, he's not like one to lose very often. So I'm kind of interested to see how this works. Be so many if like uh, Denzel's kid gets to be like human torch. Like, no. <laughs> I feel like they've done that though, right? Because we, the last Fantastic Four had uh, Creed. What's his face in it? It's yeah. The human torch. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan. So um, I think Disney needs it. If they're going to shake it up, shake it up real good. And I trust Disney with my Marvel movies because they've done a really good job so far. Yeah, yeah, dude. I can't wait. I'm. I'm. Is like Kang gonna be? <coughs> so is Kang gonna be like the main villain of Ant Man, or is he gonna be like Thanos, where you see only his like this hand or something? You know? Yeah, I think that we're getting we're getting introduced to Kang in Ant Man. Yeah. So I don't think Ant Man defeats him. I think Ant Man just realizes he's got a real big ass problem. But what's kind of cool about this is Ant Man's been kind of a smaller hero on a smaller scale. Yeah, and this is a big time Thanos sized villain, right? And so it's nice to see them actually putting a lot of money into a Paul Rudd movie, which I'm excited about. Yeah, like Ant Man never really excites me. 
but every time I watch it, I like I really like the movie. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I really like I liked all the Ant-Man movies. I love the first one. I like the second one, but I like Paul Rudd because Paul Rudd yeah. is the most likable dude ever. Yeah. And he just seems to get younger. He's got like that Benjamin Button syndrome where he doesn't ever age. Yeah, because I remember in uh, Guardians, right? We see Thanos, but the main villain was Ronan, you know? Yeah, it's true. So they might do that too. Like he's fighting somebody and like, oh shit, what's that blue guy over there? Yeah, it, it's even worse. Yeah, because yeah. remember when we saw Guardians, we thought, damn, Ronan's so badass. And he was nothing compared to, <laughs> to Thanos. So it makes you wonder, like, who who are they going to, like, fight against of all the, you know, right. Marvel movies? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm excited, though, because I guess um, they were saying, I think that Ant-Man's daughter also becomes part of the Young Avengers. So you're getting a lot of different kids from other superheroes that become part of the Young Avengers. So Cause like, that's going to be neat, too. Well, there's uh, Iron Man's daughter. Oh, yeah. We've already been introduced to her. Yeah. Young did, Adventures are gonna be all chicks. Yeah. Did you ever see the um, Catherine Langford scene of Endgame? What was it? Where uh, she's all like his Iron Man's daughter's all grown up. It's when like basically Iron Man snaps, right? Yeah. And he's you know how when Dino snap, he goes into that little like uh, purgatory thing where you know was it worth it? You know, sort of thing. Oh, right. Yeah. Little, yeah. Little, um, yeah. So he goes into that too and sees like a grown up version of his daughter. Oh. And I guess a, I don't, any, I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. They took it out because like, I watched it. It was so cringy. Dude. I'm like, oh, oh. good. <laughs> they, they took it out. It is so off. They realized it didn't fit. Yeah. Because at the very end, he's like, I love you 3000. Like, all oh, creepy, oh. dude. <laughs> it's so creepy. You should watch it. It's hilarious. Is it on the YouTubes? Uh, it's on Disney Plus, like all the oh. ex, uh, extra oh, features. Got it. Nice. I've never yeah. watched any extra features on a Disney Plus show. Yeah, go watch it and wait till the end. It's like, ooh, ooh. good thing they cut it, dude. It's so yeah. weird. Weird. So, do you think that that actress will be the same actress, or do you think they'll switch her? Well, I heard that she wants to be in it, so I'm not sure. After watching uh, that Merlin show, I'm like, oh man. Oh, that's the girl. Yeah, that's she's yeah. not a good actress. Yeah, <laughs> from Thirteen Reasons Why. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's just that show though. Yeah, so I don't know who like who else is gonna be young, you know, the Young Avengers. Uh, yeah, I I I closed that tab by accident, but yeah, there's a whole slew of Young Avengers type characters. So, um, bring it on. Well, well like Spider Man's still pretty young. Is that is he yeah. considered? And he didn't really ever seem to want to be part of this version of the Avengers. So why not yeah. put him yeah. in the Young Avengers? Right. I'd be down for that. Because honestly, I don't really know who else is there. I don't either. Young Avengers, yeah. I believe, came out either after I was in done being into comics, or I just never paid attention to it because I've never read a Young Avengers book in my life. Do you get like New Mutants in there? <laughs> yeah, I mean they, they they're looking for all sorts of ways to introduce all this new stuff because they have a lot of yeah. content, and yeah. obviously they they want to stay on the role they're on. So um, I think as Marvel fans, we it's going to be exciting because we're going to get things that weren't necessarily super well-known. Everybody knew what Spider-Man was before it was a movie, right? Yeah. And so, like, nobody knew what Guardians was, and now we all do. And so I, I trust in them to give us something that we've never heard of, but is totally awesome. Yeah, I think the hard part is, is trying to connect it to, you know, freaking Endgame, in and everything, and it's kind of like, uh, where do you go from there as, right. you know, as an audience? In the comic yeah. books, you could just keep going, but from like the general public's point of view, it's like, I need Iron Man. And then you show someone else as Iron Man, like, no, that's not the Iron Man. You know, it's just, right. how do you put- They'd be well served not to have anybody try to even be Iron Man for a while. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, what's the Avengers without Iron Man and Cap? It's kind of like, yes. Yeah. And I've already heard people complaining about the Falcon being Captain America. They're like, well, yeah. what do we call him? And they're like, well, we'll call him Captain America. He's like, no, he's the Falcon. <laughs> It's like, bro, in the comic book, the Falcon becomes Captain America for a while. It's normal. No, I, don't, I can't do it. It's Captain Falcon, man. Yeah, so people are stuck on that. But yeah, yeah. that's my, my big news. That was my last piece of news, too. Do you have yeah. anything you want to add before we wrap this bad boy up, seal it, and post it? Oh, no, that's a, that's a good ender. 
Yeah, it was a killer ender. So I think that uh, we'll be referencing Kang the Conqueror and Ant-Man 3 probably in the future for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So with that, we're out of here. We will see everybody on the flippity flip. Pacha. Show me what you got.